Hi everyone, let's talk QE. Fantastic stuff. Uh, an interesting concept, a little bit complicated in the way it works, but something we should all be aware of when it comes to our exam. Uh, it's a big, big policy adopted not just in the UK, but in lots of other advanced nations in the world as well. Why was QE actually adopted? Well, I'm going to talk mainly about the UK context, although most of what I say is very applicable to other countries that also use quantitative easing. Um, Basically, QE is used when traditional approaches to monetary policy have failed in achieving their objective. So, your basic idea of lower interest rates to stimulate aggregate demand to increase consumption and investment have failed in the traditional sense. And in the UK, when it came to the Great Recession in 2009, reducing interest rates to 0.5% failed for three main reasons. One, because the availability of credit in the economy was very low. The access of finance for commercial banks was very low. They found it hard to raise finance to actually issue loans out to people. That was a major issue. Second, because consumer and business confidence was so low, uh, consumers and firms were just not very willing to borrow money from the bank. And finally, there was a lack of willingness for banks to lend money out as well. So a trio of horrible factors that went against the reduction of interest rates to stimulate aggregate demand and increased growth. Therefore, if all else fails with interest rates, there is another approach to monetary policy, and that's a direct increase in the money supply through quantitative easing. Not necessarily printing money in the traditional sense, but essentially uh, creating more money and injecting it into the economy, although subtly. How does it work? Well, these are the stages. I've written it down just to save me a bit of time. You can write this all down, I'm going to go through it. But the key thing to look for is how these three things are solved. Now, another key issue when it came to the Great Recession in the UK is that the Bank of England were cutting rates, but that doesn't guarantee that ordinary interest rates being charged to consumers, to, to households, would also fall. No way, I'll give you an example. You know, my parents in 2010 went to a bank and wanted to borrow quite a, a small sum of money, nothing too substantial. Their financial histories were very, very secure. They both had very good jobs, no problems of default or, or debt in the past at all. No reasons why they should be rejected the loan. Yet, one, they were rejected because banks were not willing to lend at all to anybody. They weren't willing to take any risk. But even if they did get the loan, the interest rate they would have been charged was 4%. When official Bank of England rates were at 0.5%. So something was going wrong there. What we're going to look at here is how QE solves that problem. How can QE increase the excellent the accessibility of credit, which makes it easier for banks to lend out money. Let's look for that. And also, how can QE actually end up reducing the overall rates in the economy that ordinary consumers uh, are charged when it comes to taking out money from the bank, whether it's ordinary loans or whether it's buying mortgages. Let's see whether overall interest rates will fall to match or come close to matching Bank of England based rates uh, through the use of QE. In theory, if that's what happens, then maybe aggregate demand will increase. How does it work? Well, first of all, the central bank electronically creates money and puts that extra money on its balance sheet. So that's the start. That's the kind of money printing idea. That's the kind of increase in the money supply idea right here. A very simple electronic push of a button to create however much money the monetary policy committee decides to inject into the economy. Then that money is used to buy up financial assets. Assets from financial companies like banks, like building societies, like hedge funds, pension funds, sovereign funds, mutual funds, all these different financial institutions in the economy. Uh, financial assets are bought from these guys, but especially when it came to Q in the UK, it was government bonds. Government bonds were bought up. Uh, and that was done for a very specific reason. The idea was basically to disincentivize people with money to buy these government bonds. Take these government bonds away from people and supply, instead of pieces of paper, IOUs, supply them with cash instead. So take away these assets and buy up uh, these assets and instead give these financial institutions money, cash. So uh, what does that do to the government bonds, the price of government bonds? Well now with an increased demand for government bonds, with the central bank buying up loads and loads and loads of government bonds, that will increase the demand for them and push up their prices. And as you've learned from my previous video on bonds, the basics of bonds, you'll know that when the price of a bond goes up, the interest rate or the yield on that government bond will actually fall. And remember, the interest rate on a government bond represents the return for an investor but the cost of borrowing to the issuer. 
So for the government, in a sense, to actually raise finance, to issue money, is actually cheaper now because yields are falling. But anyway, for people, for investors, for firms that actually look to buy these, the yield is lower, so it reduces the incentive to hold government bonds now. So now these financial institutions that have got bucket loads of cash delivered by the Bank of England and buying up these government bonds have choices to make. They can either use this cash and straight away repackage it and deliver loans out to individuals. Great. And if that's what happens, then fantastic. So if they use this money to loan out to people, that's a big tick because that straight away is the intention of QE. Right? But more likely, because banks will still be unwilling to lend at this, uh, at this stage, more likely uh, financial institutions will just invest this money somewhere else. If it's not backing government bonds because the yield is lower, instead they might invest in riskier corporate bonds or shares. I say corporate bonds are riskier, not much riskier. The only extra risk they take is the risk of default, whereas the government is less likely to default corporate uh, firms or private firms are more likely to default, so it's slightly riskier, but not really. And there are conditions in place which actually uh, reduce the risk involved when people buy corporate bonds. So uh, not really that much riskier, but will be a higher yield uh, asset. So in that sense, buy more corporate bonds or buy shares, whatever it might be. They invest this money somewhere else. If they invest it in shares, and those shares are being held by uh, lots of consumers or lots of households in the country, then the wealth effect may well stimulate an increase in consumption. Or if lots of other businesses held these shares, then again, the wealth effect may stimulate investment. So even if these companies, financial institutions, invested in shares, there may well be a beneficial effect uh, throughout the rest of the economy. But even if they invest in corporate bonds, that's fine. Because remember what I said about the yield on bonds. The yield on bonds, whether government or corporate, reflect the cost of borrowing for the issuer. So for banks who issue corporate bonds, if the yield on these bonds actually reduces, it means accessing finance is cheaper. They can raise finance, but now at a lower cost to them. So if there is a greater demand generally out there in the economy for corporate bonds, what happens to the price of corporate bonds? Well, the price of these bonds actually rise. And therefore, the yield, which is inverse, the interest rate on these bonds, will actually start to fall. So for issuers of corporate bonds, the cost of borrowing falls. It becomes easier to raise finance. It becomes easier to access finance, cheaper to access finance. So this reduces the cost of borrowing money. Fantastic news for commercial banks who tend to raise finance by issuing corporate bonds. And therefore now by issuing more and more of these corporate bonds, uh, it becomes cheaper to raise finance. It becomes easier to actually issue loans out to people. And this was very much the idea of QE. So all of a sudden now, number six, for commercial banks, access to credit becomes easy. There is loads of money flying around the corporate bond market. So accessing money becomes easy, you just need to issue more corporate bonds and you can bring in finance. Very, very simple way of doing it. And they can actually access finance at lower interest rates, making it cheaper for them to raise finance. And that means, well, that makes it easier for them to loan out money to basic individuals. That tends to be how they do it. They take money from their corporate bonds, they sell corporate bonds, raise finance and then issue loans. So that increases the willingness to lend and crucially, Banks will therefore be more willing to lend to ordinary individuals and firms at lower interest rates themselves. Now that they are actually able to borrow at lower rates, they're more likely to pass on the lower rates to you and I, or to businesses, when it comes to taking out generic loans, generic mortgages, generic loans for investment, which is great. And if that happens, then actually market rates out there in the economy will come down and potentially match the Bank of England or the Monetary Policy Committee base rate, which was not happening. Uh, in 2009, whereas with QE the intention was to lower market interest rates. And if that happens, ordinary interest rates in the economy end up falling, well then borrowing may well be stimulated, saving, disincentivized, and therefore with more borrowing, there could well be more consumer spending, more investment taking place, increasing AD, increasing growth, reducing unemployment, and taking the economy back to a recovery stage instead of being stuck in deep recession. That was the idea. So we think about it here, what were the key stages? The key stages were to disincentivize uh, investing in government bonds, reducing the yield on government bonds was a key stage here. And the second key stage, you could say, was reducing the yield on corporate bonds. As soon as the yield on corporate bonds fall, then generally interest rates in the economy end up falling. That's a big, big link. And that's why when you look at reports uh, published by the Monetary Policy Committee, they often say that the effective QE was to actually cut off between 2 and 3% of market interest rates. 
different they are to the Bank of England base rate. So even though the Bank of England rate was at 0.5%, if you actually wanted to take out a loan, you'll be looking at paying 3 4% interest. Whereas through quantitative easing, supposedly, about 2% was cut off that rate because of corporate bonds, the general cost of borrowing uh, in the economy actually falling. So the, uh, the yield on corporate bonds falling, reducing the cost of borrowing. That was the idea, and that actually fed through to ordinary consumers and businesses. So that's how QE worked, increasing the money supply, but the very, the, very much, uh, the very major intention was to increase aggregate demand by increasing borrowing, increasing spending and investment. Uh, whether it's worked or not, well, that's up to you to decide. It's very difficult to tell, but in theory, that's how QE works. Keep that in mind, learn it, use it in your exam, and you'll be swell. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.